the uh, next chart is a quote from one of four uh, studies uh, that have been paid for by your government and have been uh, pretty much ignored by your government. All four of these studies have said essentially the same thing, that peaking of oil is either present or imminent with potentially devastating consequences. And we really need to be doing something about that. The Corps of Engineers was one of those studies, the second one in September of 05, and earlier one, the Hirsch report, was in February of 05. And then last year, there were two more reports, one by the Government Accountability Office and the other was by the National Petroleum uh, Council. Oil, they said, is the most important form of energy in the world today. Historically, no other energy source equals oil's intrinsic qualities of extractability, transportability, versatility, and cost. It has been really cheap. One barrel of oil represents the work output of 12 people working all 5,000 man hours of effort. When I first saw that statistic, I said, gee, that can't be true. And then I thought about it, how far that gallon of gas, still cheaper than water in the grocery store, carries my Prius, about 47, 48 miles. And I know I could pull my Prius 47, 48 miles with a come along and using guardrails and trees and so forth. How long would it take me to pull my Prius 47 miles? It, certainly it is true that historically no other energy source equals oil's qualities. It's uh, quality of energy and the quantity of energy in, in these fossil fuels, particularly oil, is just incredible. And that's one of the big challenges we face in finding alternatives for these fossil fuels is something that has the, the, the uh, quality and the quantity of the energy in these fossil fuels. The uh, next chart is a cartoon that asks the question, just why is gas so expensive? <clears throat> and you can see here a, a tiny little supply and a huge demand. And that, of course, is why oil is so expensive. It's because the demand exceeds the uh, supply. This problem is an even more demanding problem than just the supply and demand because as the next chart shows us, the um, major supplies of oil come, as the president said in one of his State of the Union messages from countries that don't even like us. This is a um, chart which shows the, um, what the world would look like if the size of the country was relative to how much oil it had in the ground. And you see here that Saudi Arabia dominates the landscape. Uh, Saudi Arabia represents about 22% of all the reserves of oil in the world. And you see how large the reserves are in countries like Iraq and tiny little Kuwait and the United Arab Emirates. You almost have to have a magnifying glass to see them on a map. They're so small. Look how huge they are relative to, to oil. And then Iran is huge. Russia, just a couple of days ago, Russia indicated that they had reached their maximum capacity for producing uh, uh, oil. Uh, the United States, we have 2% of the known reserves of oil in the world. We use a fourth of the world's oil. <laughs> and what I really would like to focus on is the size of India and China over there, more than a third of the world's population. And they have less oil than we have. And we have only 2% of the known reserves of oil in the world. The uh, next chart um, has this in some numbers, and these numbers inspired 30 of our prominent Americans, uh, uh, Jim Woolsey and... Uh, McFarlane and Warden Gray and 27 others to write several years ago a letter to the president saying, Mr. President, the fact that we have only 2% of the world's oil reserves and we use 25% of the world's oil and import almost two thirds of what we use is a totally unacceptable national security risk. And we really got to do something about that. That's true that this represents a huge national security risk. 
This was recognized in our next chart by the um, Secretary of State in a comment that she made before a Senate um, committee just a bit over two years ago, April 5, 2006. We do have to do something about the energy problem. I can tell you that nothing has really taken me aback more as Secretary of State than the way that the politics of energy is. I will use the word warping diplomacy around the world. We have simply got to do something about the warping now of diplomatic effort by the all-out rush for energy supply. And in that all-out rush, China, uh, China is scouring the world and buying up oil reserves wherever they can find them. The next chart looks again at the uh, geopolitical uh, picture. Um, why is oil just so expensive? Uh, many people believe that, the, uh, that OPEC is gouging us. Others believe that our oil companies uh, are, are, are gouging us. The truth, of course, is that um, the price of oil by the relationship between the supply of oil and the demand for oil. Our large companies and the countries that are producing oil just happen to be happy recipients of this confluence of events which demands more oil than is available and so the price is up. What this chart looks at is the top 10 of the oil and gas companies on the basis of how much oil they have. And you see that 98% of these top 10 are all countries. They are not companies. Most of the oil in the world is not owned by companies, it's owned by countries. Luke Oil, which is kind of an independent oil company in Russia, is only 2% at the top of this bar. The bar here looks at the top 10 oil and gas companies on the basis of production. Now we have huge oil companies. Um, ExxonMobil, the largest one in the world, Royal Dutch Shell, BP, Collectively, they produce only 22% of the oil. And these state-owned fields produce 78% of the oil. The next chart, I mentioned uh, China's interest in scouring the world and looking for uh, uh, oil. And wherever you see a dollar sign on this chart, we have bought some oil. Here I see a dollar sign, here I see a dollar sign, here I see a dollar sign, not very many of them. When you see this little Chinese symbol kind of a sign here, that's where China has bought oil. Here's one they tried to buy Unical in our country. You see their symbol all over the world. They are aggressively buying oil all over the world. In today's world, it really doesn't make any difference who owns the oil. The person who has the dollars, it's a, an auction, a bidding process. The person who has the dollars buys the oil. Why would China be buying up oil if they simply come with the dollars and you buy all the oil they need on the world market? Well, it's hard to get inside another person's head. But it may just be that they are looking to the day when they will not be able to share their oil with the world. Now, all the oil in all the world is shared with all the world. It's all a huge auction pool, and everybody contributes and everybody buys. That happy day may, may end.